always talk about how this is a journey and it is so i might as well take you guys on the whole journey with me i'm curious to know if i can do something with this pouch so i am taping together some pieces of paper to represent fabric and then i'm going to cut at it and see what happens i feel like <clears throat> my tablet can fit in the smaller size now this size right here is the extra large and I'm glad that I cut it to extra large but I think I feel as though if I took off any amount of inches in any way and I think the smaller size is actually the cuter size so we're gonna go with the smaller size which means this template is too big. So um, I gotta fix that. What I really need is a size between <clears throat> the sizes that she's given um, because this is going to be, it'll barely fit if it does fit. I don't know if I'll be able to, even though I know that the zipper right here will give me some wiggle room and the concept of putting it together is just the same so I know there'll be a little bit of wiggle room right here but it'll just barely fit and it says that it says it tells you the, the size of the tablet that you can get and I don't know why I was trying to push it so my tablet measures in its case eight by eleven and a half and that's really what this is for so am I going to do the in-between sizes and just hope for the best, which I could because the concept is just what the concept is, or am I gonna do it exactly as she says? Stay tuned. So I decided to do some custom measurements and just hope for the best, and I think it will come out because of the concept of it all. And I've seen some other people do similar pouches, so yeah. I think we will be fine. All right, I figured it out. I have. This was driving me insane. When I tell you insane, it was driving me absolutely insane, but we figured it out. This is gonna be the main fabric, and this right here is going to be the little color, um, the little color peekaboo whatnot. Now, I am not concerned about whatever happens on the back. Whatever happens, happens, but I wanted this to be a different color. I don't know why I've been so obsessed with it, but I couldn't do anything else that I was supposed to do until I got this out. So now that I figured out how to do it, let's do it. All right, so we're finally getting ready to get into this project. I pieced my front piece. So this is the, the front piece. It is much larger than it needs to be. And then you have some backing fabric and you also need some batting. You need your zipper, some binding, and a zipper pull. And then we're gonna have a really cool pouch. I'm gonna zhuzh mine a little further because you've met me before, but the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this piece down to size. And my piece has already been quilted. But again, you need a front piece of fabric. It does not need to be pieced. Some batting, some backing, binding, a zipper, and a zipper pull, and you should be cooking with gas. I went ahead and um, quilted mine with these rainbow flames with my variegated thread from Wizard Wizardry, which I love their variegated thread. I think it's so special. So let me cut this down to size, and we'll be right back. Since I'm hacking this, let me show you guys what I'm doing. I knew that I had... First of all, when you're quilting something, you need a larger piece of backing than I did. I just did not do this great. I'm still new to the whole thing. So I quilted this with my embroidery machine, my tin needle. It works. It's cool. But it should be way further up. This backing should be way... Anyway, it is whatever. But I am putting this on the line... So I decided that in order for this to be cute for my particular size, and my size is a little bit custom, but for the most part, we're doing the extra large one. I'm just making mine slightly shorter in width. I'm putting this particular mark right here on the four and a half. I want four and a half inches. I did all this math and whatnot to make sure that it was going to be kind of cute. So I know I needed at least four and a half inches. So in order for me to do that, this is going to be a clean cut. I'm going to cut 
four and a half inches to the right. So I need four and a half inches up here. I'm just going to take this off. In full transparency, I think that this is very entertaining. I've got a whole gap right here <laughs> where I have did not quite nudge the uh, the pattern properly. Whatever, it's okay. It's still gonna be super cute when I finish in my mind, we'll see. All right, I have finished doing the cutting down and now it tells you to mark a specific distance from here to the top and I am going to find that distance. I'm using pretty much everything else will be from the um, from the the directions. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that right now. All right, I have marked this according to the instructions and now I'm just gonna make it a little bit more comfortable for, for myself and I'm gonna move this around and I am going to find that mark and I am going to take my ruler and put it there and then find the top edge, the top corner of this and we're going to cut with courage. This is a big piece <clears throat> that we're cutting away. And this is with the main fabric up. Main fabric up. And this you can discard. I've actually seen her run uh, some stuff and do the things and then make another little uh, guy here with a little zipper pouch. And then voila, you have another one. Um, if you want anyway, but you know, it's you discard it. So we will discard that. Now I'm going to flip this over and I am going to grab some binding. Now I probably should press this again, but raw edge to raw edge, just like you would a quilt. You are going to stitch a quarter. Actually, if you're using foam, which it would be like the buy any soft and stable. Now would be a great time to do a, a stay stitch around your quilting. Just one eighth away. Just stitch everything down to seal in all your edges, especially if you didn't quilt off the side. I think I'm going to ignore that step. If I had foam, I would not ignore that step because the more you sew foam, the more it compresses. So if you're using buy any soft and stable, which I love, and if I had, you know, not been doing this on my embroidery machine, I probably would have tried to use. So if you're using foam, again, go around and sew one eighth of an inch away to compress the, the, the um, material. But again, this is the back. I'm going to put this here. I'm probably going to press this a little bit harder and then sew a, sew it a quarter of an inch all the way down to attach it. So now I'm going to press this this way here and then we're going to roll it over to the front but I want to make this really nice and crisp so I'm going to really make an effort to make this a nice binding and I'm going to use that same rainbow thread we are going for all the rainbows if it's a rainbow we are going for it And I'm going to top stitch it. And the cool part about this is you just top stitch one side and you don't have to worry about the other stuff, the other sides or anything. It's all done on one. So I'm going to press this down like this and then top stitch it with that same rainbow thread. Anytime I want my edge stitching to look pretty, I use this um, stitch in the ditch foot. And I also glue based my binding down so that it stays really nice and straight and pretty. And I'm using that same ombre thread. So 
So we're all finished sewing this binding on. I feel very good about how that came out. I think it came out pretty good. I hope you guys can see that. I hope it's focusing. Um, I used a 3.5 stitch length because I really wanted to lay that rainbow fabric, that thread out on the rainbow thing. Because why not, right? I'm having a good time. So next, you're going to take your zipper and do the unthinkable. Do not freak out, but it is a little weird. You're going to take this and you're going to cut off any metal stops or anything that you have there and you are going to separate that. Now, that's not something we usually do, but voila. And I'm very curious to see what happens with this rainbow. I don't know what's going to happen when it folds on itself. It looked beautiful before. Will it still look cool? Will it match up? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to just let go and see. Now, these fabric glue pins right here are a thing. And supposedly, the yellow ones are fabric to fabric. And the ones that we're pretty much used to, these blue ones, these the white and blue, the white and pink ones or whatever, are supposed to be great for um, paper to fabric. So we'll see. I'm going to try it and see if I can stick this zipper down. If this does not stick, I'm going to grab some Wonder Tape and I'm going to just, because I'd like it to lay straight and I'd like to get at least a chance of getting this, um, getting this straight. Also, I'm going to cut off these extended ends here. Just clean it up to make it a little easier to see what we're doing. This is the back and I'm going to cut from the back. I can see and there we go and we'll cut this off here and there we go I'm going to extend it try to extend it the same length on both sides about there this looks so cute and rainbowy is that a word eh. Eh. all right I'm gonna try to fix this and fiddle with it and see if I can't get it to to lay nicely with this glue we shall see if you ever wondered how you change these you just stick it all the way up and pop it out um, am I gonna save that I think I <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> so you pop the top off. They just pop right off. And you stick this in. And you just take it on down. Same stitch in the ditch foot. Same 3.5. We're just going nice and slow. And I've got that ditch foot right in that ditch. It really did hold it right in place for me. And yes, I put a rainbow zipper on a rainbow binding with some rainbow flames. If you've met me, it all tracks. It makes sense. Shout out to Julie at Sewing Arts because I am super pleased with how this came out. And it just glued right into place like I needed it to. Once you get to this point of the Hemingway pouch, you are pretty much done. Um, you just need to... You're so close, I should say. You're so close to done. You would fold this like this and then bring this down and slip the zipper on. That's going to be a little fight. Just be prepared for it. It's going to be a little fight. Not a big deal. And sew and sew and you'd be good. I'm going to do a little measuring. I'm going to play with an image that I'm excited to play with to add to this pouch. So I'm going to measure the width of this and see kind of where we end up. And then I'm gonna find center. I'm gonna find center here. And then I am going to mark center and then I'm gonna do my applique. So I got downstairs and got busy on this, um, on this dragon. And I actually use my single needle. So this is 16 thread changes worth every bit. I didn't wanna pull off and re-thread my 10 needle specifically for this project. And I was like, you know what? I'll just sit here and chill and just do, do the work. So I did it. 
And we've got a it jumped off just a little bit, but and I learned a little bit about you know doing your trimming and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I think it looks pretty darn cool. So now we it's time to really close this guy up. And all I'm going to do is just put this together just for a second so that we can get this zipper going. Now, this zipper is going to be fidgety. It just is. It's okay. Don't freak out. It's gonna, it's gonna be fidgety. I'm gonna try to cut them the same length. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab this zipper with the nose pointing that way. I'm gonna insert one side and then insert the other. And then it's again, it's gonna be, it's gonna take me a minute to get it on here. It's not fast. If you've got, it's gotta have a jig or something, that's great. But I'm gonna fidget with this for a second and then it's gonna be on here. Here we go. All right. And I've got a string that's just dying to get in the way here. All right. Oh, the zipper's still cute. She's still cute. All right. All right, so now that we have this all beautiful, we are going to pull it back a little bit, maybe about that far, no, maybe a little bit further. And we're gonna flip the pouch inside out. All right, now that the pouch is inside out, we need to line up all those edges because it's time to close her up. And we're just gonna sew a scant, maybe not even a scant quarter inch, just sew barely a quarter of an inch all around. so that we can close this up and also put some stops in on this zipper so it doesn't come flying out. I'm going to line up all my edges and smooth it out and then I'm going to just sew to close this up. Not a full quarter though, just enough to, to close it. All right, it's all closed up. And now I'm going to just trim off this zipper. Great. And we are going to zipper. And now I'm going to bind it. Oh, I guess I should press this a little better. Give me a second. I'm going to press out the rest of this binding just a little bit. Now we're going to bind this baby just like a quilt. We are going to leave about a half of an inch overhang. And then I'm going to rock it from here to here with a quarter inch seam, a generous quarter inch. After you finish sewing it, I stopped a quarter of an inch short for funsies. And now I'm going to sew it down just like you would a quilt. So now I'm going to also cut this about a half of an inch away not necessarily being too careful about it, I guess, but uh, about a half of an inch. And that's excess. Now we're going to roll over to the other side and capture all of this in there, but we're also going to roll this in just so that we don't have any raw edges. And then roll it in like a present. Remember this is the inside of your bag, not a big deal. And I am going to just stitch it down. I'm not gonna be overly worried about it. It's the inside of the bag. 
and I'm gonna do the same thing over here just like a present you're gonna fold it in and then you're going to wrap it up and then we won't have any raw edges over here so now I'm just gonna stitch this down um, in this I'm not going to make it pretty or anything like that I'm just going to jump in I'm not gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna stitch it down So now we are just going to grab a plate turner. I need a heavy duty one for this. And as you can see, I just stitched it down with my white thread. I wasn't trying to be cute or anything like that. I just, it's just stitched down. Now we're going to turn our beautiful case inside out. gonna burst the bag as they say I don't know why I always have to giggle and say that I don't even like it but I always say it <laughs> <sighs> apparently I'm 12 today so there's a lot of bulk in these corners so you can you can do the best you can to try to turn them out I tried to turn them out the best I could and I love this guy hopefully it fits my tablet I have not tried um, I don't know that I should be trying on camera in case it, go, it goes terribly bad. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see if it fits. It looks like it is going to... Oh, we got action. Oh, great. Now I can just toss this in my bag and go to the airport or wherever. I've got about... Ooh. I've got about an inch... And I've got an inch of room, so I could have cut it down one inch less. Height-wise, I needed all of that, but I could have cut it down. Well, I guess if I got an inch on this side, I've got an inch on that side. So I guess I could have cut it down about two inches less, but that would have been really... It would have been cute. We shall see. All right, guys, that's it. That's the end of this project. This is a fast so if you are not recording yourself, you can get this done very, very quickly. If you don't do this, you can get it done even faster. If you don't try to do all this extra stuff, quick, fast, so cute. I'm so excited that I have one. I wanted one so badly and now I've got it. So this is what it looks like. Oh, so exciting. Mm -hmm.